Today I'm going to adjust the record oscillator bias current and the bias frequency adjustment as per the service manual instructions for this Sharp GF9191 restoration project that I'm working on. First thing I got to do is make sure that I got the uh, here the tape select switch I got it set for normal tape not chrome tape and then also in the back of the back of the machine I got to put the beat switch into the A position here's a beat switch right there I just got to put that into the A position and like I said the tape switch here you can select between normal and chrome tape here this has to be in the normal position since I'm going to be adjusting put potentiometers I'm going to need a flathead screwdriver so I'm either going to use this one or this one lately I've gotten the habit of using these uh, like ceramic type screwdrivers while I'm turning stuff but I think either one will do I'm also going to have to defeat the anti-record mechanism since there's no cassette in there. I'm just going to push this lever down and then hit the play and record buttons at the same time. And there it's in record. Now I'm going to go ahead and take a reading with my volt ohmmeter. In order to do the measurements and adjustment, I'm going to use my old Trusky Heathkit AC millivoltmeter. Of course, when you do these measurements, your your readings are only going to be as accurate as your test equipment is. Oh, well, you probably could use a digital um, voltmeter if if it's you know if you have a good good one. So I'm going to have to do two adjustments. And there are two different one adjustments for the one channel and one adjustments for the other channel, the left and right channel respectively. There's also two test points here, one for each channel. I think it's TP101, TP102, and I'm going to use TP6 down to here as a ground. And I'm going to start out with the, I think the. TP 101 I got to get the camera out of the way to do this so I got my positive test lead took up to TP 101 and my adjustments are going to be made at the other side on the left side of the cassette mechanism there's two potentiometers R301 R302 I'm going to turn on my AC millivoltmeter now which this one it you can start out on you got when you turn it on it starts out on the highest scale which is good and then you work your way down I've got to let this thing warm up a couple minutes because it's a tube type voltmeter with my meter hooked up to TP 101 I'm now going to adjust the R301 here which is located on the left side of the cassette mechanism and um, see what we what I'm what kind of a measurement that I'm getting I'm getting right about 60 millivolts and I'm supposed to be reading 50 I have to make my adjustment toward 50 So that's right about 50 right now. I'm on the point 1 volt range, which is 100 millivolts. So I have my test lead hooked up to the second test point. First one was right there, and now second one is right there. 
course my ground wires are going to stay in the same place okay this reading is somewhat high too so I'm going to go ahead and make an adjustment I think I'm going the wrong way again I'm using the point one volt range and I'm getting 50 millivolts now after I made the adjustment and as far as I remember this adjustment helps with frequency response and linearity just taking it from the back of my head as far as my memory goes now I have to make sure that my record oscillator bias frequency is 53 kilohertz or 53,000 hertz and specified is plus or minus 3 kilohertz or plus or minus 3,000 hertz so the range is from 50,000 to 56,000 hertz I'm going to go ahead and attach my digital multimeter which has a frequency counter function in order to make the frequency measurement I'm just hooking up the test leads to the ground I used earlier and I think I've got it hooked up to test point 102 either I could use TP 101 or TP 102 okay my rating is 52.36 kilohertz which is within the specified range I'm going to go with Go ahead and adjust it anyways to get it exactly on 53 kilohertz. In order to do that, I gotta have to adjust this bias uh, oscillator coil right here. That just turns with a flathead screwdriver. So now I'm in the process of doing that adjustment. and that should be about it that's right about 53 kilohertz about as close as I can get it so I hooked up my oscilloscope to one of those exact same test points and here you can see the oscillator sine wave and I would say that's exactly how it's supposed to look now I've hooked my AC millivolt meter back up and I'm going to go ahead and take some measurements again see if that changed anything if I have to do a little readjust not really and I'm going to go ahead and check the other test point which is for the other channel I'm just going to swap the test leads. That didn't change anything either. So that concludes this adjustment. I might do more adjustments. I don't know yet if it gets too tedious for me.